King of the Hill match, here is the defending champion, Don Brush. Don, with the unusual approach, people ask us how we determine who is the leadoff bowler in our final match. We don't flip coins or anything else. By tradition, our King of the Hill is the leadoff bowler in the final match. And whoever is our leadoff bowler always rolls on lane one. We haven't seen that from this champion before. And Dave Sessler earlier showed us that he is not to be tampered with, is he? No. Certainly he can meet a challenge. There's no question about that. And he starts off with nine. Well, there is plenty of qualifying time for Syracuse Bowls at Fairmont Bowling Center Friday anytime after 5 p.m. on Saturday from noon until midnight and Sunday starting at 4 p.m. Dave Sessler, by the way, had seven strikes in the last game. We've had a total of 18 strikes so far today, nine in game one, nine in game two. But only Henry Rivers has put them together for strike jackpot, four for $100. And Well, we're going to have a look here now at Dave Sussler's line. As we say, he has changed his line depending on the lane from the center about three quarters of the way back, releasing at the 15th board. He heads for the third range finder, but he pulls the ball a little bit this time, crosses over, and goes on the one-two side. And when Sussler bowls on lane two, when he's up in the next frame, he will be using, as they say, more of an outside line than the one which he just used on lane one. Well, he's got double wood there. Yes, there's one hiding in back, sometimes a tough pin as it is here. Well, he missed them both. Well, these bowlers exchange early open frames. Sussler stays up by one mark which is the handicap differential. Turns it in that time. Well, Don Brush, very strong, unusual five-step approach. Devastating ball when it gets in there. He starts from the left side, releasing from the 20th board between the second and the third range finders. He is a tightly wound machine, isn't he? Well, let's see. Strike jackpot money in his previous appearances. Don once had five in a row. And he's had three in a row. And last week he had three in a row. So in strike jackpot money, he has earned $275. And he takes the lead from Dave Sussman with a two-backer combined with Dave's wide open split. And now Dave trying to avoid back-to-back -back open frames. Well, this one's occasionally made, but if you make it once a year or so, you feel pretty good. The four sets. And now is the time to form your league or have your team join a league for the bowling season starting in September. Call Fairmont Bowling Center at 487-8411 for whatever information you need on getting into a league. Our defending King of the Hill through three frames leads by one mark. And you've not called Dave Bill once? <laughs> no, give it time. But you planted the seed yes. because I have that urge. Well, he really has told me several times he's grateful for the publicity that he had when his nephew was bowling. <laughs> Not a word on Don Brush here. He has rolled four games before our television cameras previously. Three of them last season and won this. As he tries to get his third strike in a row and leaves a couple on the way. His actual pin scores have been 247, 189, 199, and 173. So Don Brush, four games on television with an average of 2.02. During the summer, bowlers can qualify for Syracuse Bowls three days each week at Fairmont Bowling Center. Lanes are available Friday starting at 5 p.m. Saturday is from noon to midnight and starting at 4 p.m. on Sunday.
Well, as we mentioned, Dave Sessler had those seven strikes in his last game. He's gone through the first four frames without one here. I think most of us would have racked that one up as a strike when we saw the ball going down. We should pass along a note that we had prior to Sharon Irving's appearance in the last game. She had written out some information for us, and I just couldn't turn the page. But uh, Sharon had moved to Syracuse from Elmira a year and a half ago. She bowled occasionally for 15 years as Dave Sester gets on the board with a strike. But she became semi-serious about the game approximately a year ago. Let's watch the replay. She'd like to say hi to all of her family and friends watching in Elmira. And to pat somebody on the back, uh, Sharon goes on to say that since January, when she switched from a 12-pound plastic conventional grip ball, Dick Saliba has guided her, and also Tommy and Gabe at the Bowling Green, who helped her a lot on the approach, release, and picking up the corner pin. She was nervous, but she still bowled well. And she wants to be back, and I hope she is back. Well, we've had a number of girls that have done very well on the program. Sherry Capato in the past, uh, Mary Catarasano and Renee Catarasano. Also Jan Woods, who has been on the program several times, although we haven't seen her for a couple of years. As we look at another powerful strike, through five, defending King of the Hill, Don Brush leads challenger Dave Sessler by one mark. Now let's see where Don's strikes have come. In lane one, where he's been up now four times, he has had one strike. And on lane two, where he has been twice, three times, he has had two strikes. And he's open right there. Uh, two now, opens, but still a lead. Well, now, if Sessler can get one here, our match will be tied through seven, through six frames. He tied through seven, unless this is a strike. Well, that's the lightest fill that Dave Sessler has had today, and that could prove to be a costly one. Well, actually, now with a mark here, it'll be virtually even, but it'll trail by at least a pin. Sometimes those short fills can really do you in. Our special squads during the week at PACC, Tim Borland was the winner. Dave Sessler up there now is the winner at Fairmont Bowling Center. Our high qualifier is Larry Seaman at PACC, Steve O'Toole at Fairmont. There's the strike you needed. 2-7, Sessler trails by one pin. Yeah, Sessler has been fighting uphill all day. Yes, an exciting day with that fine 2.30 in the opening game by Henry Rivers, the great surge by Sessler late in the second game, and here is a match that's really on, a one-pin difference, and each bowler operating on a strike in the eighth frame. This ought to go down to the last ball, too. Been a good show. No, he missed the mark. Yes, this lane suddenly has gone sour for Don Brush. Eight pins this time. The last time it was seven. The time before that, it was nine. In fact, he only solved it in one frame because he had an open frame here. Twice in the first and seventh. Strike here, Sester would take the lead as you look at the John Murillo scoring table there. The spare will be even going into the 10th. Yes, he gets it. 
takes it off the wall. Dave Sussler is our leader. Well, now he's in a position, if he can keep going, as we look at that replay, getting the action off the board to pick off the 10 pin. Where it's possible now that Dave Sussler could shut out his opponent in this last frame. Well, he's not going to do it, but he gives him something to shoot for. And Dave, who had the seven strikes, but no strike jackpot money in the second game. Yes, that's his fourth double of the day. And his maximum score is a 190. And so it doesn't take much to figure out that Don Brush, to retain his laurels, is going to have to get strikes on his first two balls in the 10th frame. So we're going to go right up to the last bowler in the last frame. and that hurts. Well, that's true, but still, it still means that uh, Don Brush is going to have to come up and get the first two. If he gets the first two, then he only has to stay behind the foul line on this third ball. On this lane, he has had strikes in three or four previous balls. We have a new king of the hill. Well, Dave Sessler with that tremendous comeback in game one. That was really the key today. Getting that 233 after Henry Rivers had put up an outstanding score. Nice match, new king. 166 for Don Brush, Sessler with the 186 to win it, and we will be back to talk to both of our bowlers right after this word. Welcome back to Syracuse Bowls, where it uh, was a day of an uphill battle for you, and uh, you came up with the 186 in the final match to do it. 166 for Don. Uh, a little trouble with the lanes today? Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. <laughs> didn't you, have anything. You, you don't want to say that you had a little something? No, you you just anything. didn't have it, huh? Didn't have nothing. Okay, was it because in the uh, start of the show I didn't announce your name? or? No. <laughs> I had huh? nothing to do with it. Okay. All right, now, Dave, first of all, you had no strike jackpot money, but that's because you had the doubles, all right? But it was all day, but it was good enough for you. It, uh, uphill. I was happy, but I was very lucky, very lucky to beat Don at all. Uh, he had an off game, and I had a not-so-good game, but I was just lucky. Were you thinking at the beginning of this match, you know, having to come through with the over 230 game in, in the second game, were you worried that you might let down a little bit? Oh, yeah. Time? Oh, yeah, and I did. I proved it. <laughs> I let everything down. <laughs> I was just lucky that, you know, Don was up, that's all. Because he's you, tough to beat any time. Did you start to, you know, think that you got, had to get yourself back into the game, which you did? Yeah, I worked a little harder. I slowed down. I started getting a little fast. I pulled a few, maybe four shots, and I slowed down. Okay, so, let's bring in uh, attorney director Red Parton. And, Red, this was really one of the, one of the better, you know, the, the final match wasn't uh, as good as you might have expected, but... Uh, to get there, that was the, well, that was the fun. Uh, yes, uh, the key, of course, was a great finish that this young man made in uh, game number one when he uh, finished up with that 233. But uh, we really went right down to the final frame. And uh, Dave, I believe this is the first time that we've given you King of the Hill money, isn't it? Right, number one. <laughs> He's been with us before. And uh, we hope that it turns out at least as well as it did for Don Brush. Don was on with us for three weeks. We enjoyed having you, Don. Come back again. And uh, if nothing else, at least we sent you away with uh, about $1,900 for three weeks of work. And we're, uh, we're glad to have done that. And we appreciate your great bowling for us. Thank you. All right. $1,900 isn't bad either. No, it isn't. <laughs> All right. And uh, what, what do we have upcoming? Well, let's uh, talk about Dave Sessler for just a minute. Dave, uh, were you using a different line today in both of these? Uh... Yep. It's more difficult for us as we're sitting back here to uh, look at lane two. But Dave was bowling, I believe, more of an outside line on lane two, and uh, you found it paid off very right. well for you. Yeah. yeah, I had a change, and then the last game I started pulling, so 
Like I said, I'm lucky to be here. <laughs> you, you, almost, you, almost say, you almost sound like you uh, d didn't deserve to win, which you did. Uh, I didn't bowl that well. Now I got to worry because my nephew will be coming after me. <laughs> and we didn't ma call we didn't you your nephew's name at all no. once during the show. We thought about it, but neither one well, of us. Well, I got my name mentioned a lot when he was on, so I figured they'd just reverse it and make Billy happy, but he'll come after me. Right, how would you feel about bowling him on this show? I don't know. <laughs> I'd rather watch. <laughs> All right, uh, but you will be back next week, right. and uh, we'll be back uh, next week on Syracuse Bowls at that time. Roger Springfield will be in, and uh, he will doing the, be doing the spiel here himself. So we'll see you next week on Syracuse Bowls.